Ladies and gentlemen, Dana goes to the yeah, back! Hell yeah! Yes! Bro, I apologize about yesterday. I've made somewhat of a miraculous recover. Uh, my throat was yeah. terrible this morning, but uh, as soon as I start the show, I just get lit and turned, and I just, I can't stop. I can't do it. Matt, I appreciate you joining me, brother, and for also rescheduling the next day. I apologize. Can you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are right now. Plug or promote anything you'd like. Um, well, I'm in Toledo, Ohio. So, any Ohioans, <laughs> whatever. Um, Ohio. And... What? No, 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 I'm just talking trash. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, man. Just chilling out here uh, and working on material for, I mean, pretty much since we released this album. So we have a whole other album on the way. Already? Um, yeah. Can yeah, you give us any, any tidbits of, of the new album? Is, it, is there any working on like stuff's gonna be a little bit different this time we're gonna go a little experiment it's gonna be a lot different uh so i guess like the premise behind the twin flames album was that uh i put it together and wrote it in like uh a moment of my life where i was you know it's the subject matter of it is about relationships gone toxic and gone bad and so that's where i was and I put that together before I met Brian. And so he got together with me. He's the vocalist. So he's the guy with, with the voice. And um, he he actually, he can do more than what you've heard on the album. You know, he came, he came to me and, uh, you know, doing what I had asked him to do. So this next album, Brian's actually going to be doing Brian which is going to, um, it's just going to be so much more stellar. And the, the music, music wise, it's so much more advanced than this right here. <laughs> I'm, I, as a musician, like, I guess you're your biggest critic, right? It's true. Yeah. So when I listen to the older stuff now, I'm like, oh man, you know, why? <laughs> so when, when you, you know, say, when you say life. like here, when you, when you were like, here, Brian, this is, were you like, I kind of have a melody idea here and there for what I want you to do vocally? Or did you, like, how did you guide him to do all the vocals for, for Twin Flames? So I actually sang the vocals for him. So I would send him demos um, of me singing the songs. And then he would go back and translate them into Brian vocals. Uh, now, I, you know, I, I got a little better. And also, he runs a studio. So he showed me, um, you, you know, try this, try this, try this. Got me uh, improved in, in some of the recording techniques and a little bit more knowledgeable on mixing and uh, EQing and things like that. So all the new songs are gigantic in comparison it just the sound is enormous the the songs like every song on this album could stand alone be its own like epic Heck soundtrack yeah. yeah we're just really pumped for it couple of observations i see some stuff behind you i've only known people to have a giant black tent thing behind them like that for two reasons either you're doing vocals you're growing ganja what's going on what's going on behind you right there he's watching this video <laughs> just kidding <laughs> uh, i get it i get it from that from that answer i get it i get it vocals <laughs> um i think the first song i ever heard from you guys is is don't count on me was that a was that one of the early ones that you did? Because I know it's one of the stronger singles, but is that one of the early ones you did for Twin Flames, or is that kind of one that came at the end? Nope, that was the second one that we did. The first one was Run Around. Uh, it's really funny. Like the songs, when I write them, I work on them for months at a time. Like I don't sit down and I don't just. Um, you know, all right, I'm going to write the song about whatever. And then we got to come up with the chorus. We got to come up with, uh, you know, a strong hook for that. And, you know, try to put it together. Okay, we need a guitar part. 
like that's not how it goes in the writing process. It's that if I have an idea for, you know, a, a song, just like, like, okay, so for this album, Twin Flames, if something happened in real time, I was like, how can I, you know, get this into a song? And so I was putting my feelings in the moment into it. And then I would get the, the bare bones, you know, the uh, structure of the song going. And I've, I've had probably, you know, 12 at a time I was working on going back and forth on and I just, I listen to them, and when something hits, like, okay, this could happen here, then I'll go back and keep working on the song. But none of them came fast. Like, none of them came fast. Actually, one did. It's called Unloved. That one came overnight. That was the only one. The rest of them, I'm like a year, a year and a half in the works. And Don't Count On Me was a song that I had actually had the music for for a long time, for a couple of years. And then... uh I had came up with the melody for the hook, you know, and then the, you know, uh, and then I was like, oh man, this kind of fits with this. <laughs> and so it just, it just was magic. It was cool. And I wish we could like go back and re-record that one and make it sound, you know, bigger now. You could do anything you want, man. You have the power. You have the power to do anything you want in this, in this world. That's what mama told me when I was growing up. Yeah, we could, but it's that, that first time out that's the special one you know i hear you let's see what we're talking about here let's jam some dead echoes don't count on me but anyways oh, okay <laughs> what are, what do you what were you jamming that that influenced this your music like what what are just just rattle off like three or four artists that uh inspired you to in, just want to be a musician the ones that got me into music in the first place godsmack disturbed tool metallica Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin. Because I feel like there's a little uh, bit of an STP grunginess yep, those, to it. Anything from the grunge era, uh, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots, all of them. Like, I still, uh, me and uh, my girlfriend Jess, we listen to grunge and alt rock like every single day. <laughs> awesome. Like, we just can't get out of that era, you know? I love it. It looks like you got a bunch of really cool things behind you, like your wall of awesome, I'm going to call it. Looks like a classic X-Men, maybe an original yeah. Nintendo Power issue from back in the day. Yeah. What is your most holy of holies back there that you can show us? Back here, I have, I think what I spent the most on was I have a, a Nintendo cereal box. From like the 80s? Yeah. Yeah. That was a few hundred bucks, and um, act, we just picked up. I also collect original Ninja Turtles, the un uh, unopened box ones. Okay. And we just picked up like the original four and uh, the shredder for like a grand. So. Wow. Bit pricey, but I like the nostalgia. So. That is that is a bit pricey, but yeah, I I remember I saw Ninja Turtles on tour. When I was a kid, they did like a song and dance routine <laughs> at like a local yeah. something. It was it was awesome. Um, if someone if someone had never heard Dead Echoes before, what would you put on in the headphones when you're handing it to them? Obviously, it can't be the song we've already played, but just what would be the one song that you're like, dude, you got to check out my band. This is the one I would start with. Uh, what well, probably would have been Don't Count On Me. But after that, I really like Unlove. I think that one's good. If you're into something heavier, Dark Me is a really good one. Um... Um, yeah, I mean, every, everyone kind of has like a different style and influence to it. So it's, it's just, I guess on taste. I like heavy. Let's check out dark me. We'll go to unloving a little okay. bit, but let's go heavy first. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you, are you really big into anime? And if so, what's your favorite? Uh, not really. My kids are. So I, I think like the biggest I've gotten into it was, uh, Akira. Uh, we used to watch that over and over. And then, of course, uh, any of the Dragon Ball series. Okay. My kids watch Super right now, so I started catching up on that a little bit. Um, yeah, my kids are actually, like, big fans of my music. So one of them into anime, he's the big, big fan. And so I was like, well, let me do a, uh, some anime artwork. So actually, you know how Spotify plays little video clips of your songs? Yeah. There's a little 
uh, video thing we made for this song, The Dark Me, and then it ended up making it into a poster and a t-shirt design. And actually the blanket behind me is a The Dark Me anime blanket. So Hell yeah. <laughs> Give me a hell yeah. I love it. I love it. Hell yeah. Uh, what? Obviously you're a huge video game fan. Top three best video games ever made. They'd all be on Nintendo. Uh, I don't know, Mario 2, uh, the original Ninja Turtle game, even though I'm awful at it, and probably uh, Legend of Zelda. I don't know anyone, anyone that has ever beaten the second level of the Ninja Turtle game. Yeah, I can beat that. You you for real? Next one. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's the third level. I don't remember what level it is, but it's like the second or third level. It's like one of the hardest levels in any video game like ever made. When you start swimming, that's yeah, uh, that's the one. Like, yep. Can you beat? Wow. You can beat that level, but it just took like a thousand yeah, tries. I had to be an adult before I was able to do that. <laughs> Man, that level was hard. I hated it. I hated it, it so, so much. Hard. Um, yep. Guys, if if you're feeling the music that we're playing, please hit the follow button. Support Dead Echoes. <laughs> Let's jump back over to the YouTube page where you can do the same thing by supporting. Uh, tell me about Toxic. Toxic is, this was going to be like, uh, the vibe of it's a little bit different. So it was more of like a fun song about toxic relationships. And so just about knowing that you can't be with a certain person, but, you know, and the other person knows too, but you both still ignore the signs and go for it anyways. And it just ends up being a complete disaster. And that's something a lot of people do that. They still do it. You know, regardless of what's happened to them and, and knowing it's never going to get better, they still go at it. So that's what Toxic is. It's just a different vibe. There's a band in chat called Echo Break that says that you guys should collab and become dead Echo Break. <laughs> throwing it out there. Let's jam Toxic Sounds real quick. <laughs> no. What DAW system do you use to do all your recording? Cubase. Cubase, I, I okay. I Cubase, and then I send all the stems and everything over to um, Ryan, and I believe he uses Pro Tools to do all the mixing and everything. It translates pretty easy, the like all the MIDI and all that stuff, all the, the stems right into Pro Tools, or is there, is there, cause sometimes there's like a little bit of difficulty to match up the opposite DAWs sometimes. So, admittedly, we did it the hard way the first time. Now uh, we're recording DIs, which I had not done in the past. So I'm sending those to him, and then he's reamping, and a lot of what he does is analog uh, mixing, and he uses uh, machines and not so much software. And he likes to get that like real old school vibe with old microphones and everything. And I think it gives it a nice special touch. I really like that, uh, especially since that's what they did back in the grunge grunge era, you know. So if we're chasing that sound, might as well go the whole way, but. You know, this the new album is going to have a lot more, uh, you know, uh, background tracks, synths, harmonies, layers, a lot more going on with the vocals, a lot of, um, it's just all around, like, um, I'm so excited. It's so good. <laughs> is there is there a, a tentative release date time frame of when you're thinking of when it, I mean, probably we're talking 2023 at some point, I would imagine. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, maybe around the new year, a uh, first single will show up, you know. Cool. Maybe Hell you yeah. can have the <laughs> world premiere of it. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah! I would appreciate yeah. it. That would be awesome. Uh, if if you could if you could uh, tour anywhere, and, and per what particular country would you like to play over any other country, and why? Uh, I don't like to fly, so probably somewhere here <laughs> in the U.S. I don't know. What if it was uh, a cruise that got you to the to said country? Like in a boat? Yeah, like you played uh, like a rock cruise. So you guys were on the cruise playing, but now your boat has docked in this country, and this is kind of the country you want it to play the most anyway. So no flying probably, was involved. Well, I don't know. I think one of my biggest fears is drowning, so I, I think I would be happier in the plane. <laughs> so we're saying basically South America, America, or Canada is, is about it. That's cool. There's a lot of options right there. So there no, is. Yeah. No That's something I never even thought of. I'd like to play 
you know, shows first before I start thinking about going all out. Oh, so Dead Echoes has never played a live set. Yeah, we actually haven't. Uh, we've been exclusively a studio band for the time. Is that does Brian live in Ohio also near you, or is he fairly he far lives away? He in Michigan. He only lives like an hour and a little bit away, so it's not a big deal. It, it has nothing to do with that. I think it's mostly the lack of uh, musicians in our area at the moment. So it, the the ones who are willing to play are all already in bands and committed and then everyone else is just kind of it's it's you know it's a rough time for everybody people got to work people got a lot going on and things are expensive so it's not a lot of time for hobbies and things like this so anybody who's out there playing anybody who does have a full band gets to do that i am envious and happy for you and i say chase it and enjoy it while you can you know Let's see. Uh, are, are you are you open to having vocal collabs on the new stuff? Because I keep reading something about uh, Echo Break is like really interested in this. One, uh, one song will have a collab. Okay, we'll leave it as a surprise until then. When you're when you're not doing music, and let's just say the the kids and the wife are at grandma's tonight, so you have a bunch of free time. What what are you doing hobby wise? Uh, but it can't be anything related to music. Uh, well, we run a vape smoke shop. Cool. So we, you know, we have that, and then we make like shirts, and um, I don't know. I spend a lot of time with my kids, so it's either really I'm just working, playing with the kids, or or playing with the kids. They're all like teenagers, <laughs> hanging with the kids, or doing music stuff. Cool. Do they play any instruments themselves? They don't. <laughs> Have you have you tried? Have you been like, dude, you gotta jam the guitar? Yeah, I took uh, I took a couple of them in for guitar lessons. One was interested in piano, so I got him a keyboard. Uh, one was interested in drums, so I got him an electric kit, and not a single one of them stuck with it, which is crazy. But they love concerts and they love to do. Uh, That's you know, cool. It's not for everybody. I I totally get it. It's not for everybody. Let them find their calling. I guess you'd say. No. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, I do want to do some trivia with you. To do the trivia, I'm going to let you pick the topic. If you get it correct, we'll spin the wheel, see what it lands on, see if we can get you a prize. Uh, if not, I have no idea because I normally do like hot sauce and stuff. I'm just not doing that today because I'm ill. But to do the trivia, I need to know what movie or TV show, one or the other, have you seen the most? It doesn't have to be your favorite. Just the one you've seen the most, either a movie or TV show, where if I ask you trivia on this, you will not get stumped. Ah, uh, man. Um, uh, well, shit. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can curse. You can't go wrong with The Simpsons. Or like Rick and Morty, we watch a lot of that lately. I think we've seen all the, or most of the South Parks, uh, any of those oh, will work. Man. Whatever one you think that. Future, let's do uh, Futurama. How about that? Futurama heard. Give me a second to look up some trivia and where you are going to play Unlove. All right, now these are really hard, dude. So my my job is to stump you. Here we go. Futurama <laughs> trivia. In Futurama, there's an episode called A Tale of Two Santas. What planet... Obviously, the planet's not a, a normal planet, not a made-up one. What planet is Santa's fortress on? Is that a planet or is that a moon? It's on a planet. It's on a planet? Oh, man. Is it Mars? No. Is it Saturn? Are you going with it's Saturn? It's a real planet, not a made-up one? It's a real planet. Oh, I lost. <laughs> that is not correct. Saturn. <laughs> We'll see if chat gets it, uh, and let's jam. We should probably jam the title track, right? Twin Flames. Why did you yeah. name it Twin Flames? Is um, just out of curiosity. Uh, so Twin Flames. If you don't know what that means, it's uh, it's like a spiritual thing, and it's sort of like when you have like a soulmate with somebody, but not a soulmate where you stay together. It's where you come to somebody and. Uh, they basically turn you into like the best version of you that you're going to be. And then you split off and then you go. Yeah, it's weird. 
Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I can dig it. Uh, Neptune was the answer. Brian, like you said, taking some of the stems and just like thickening, thickening you up in Pro Tools. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, he's got to, you know, to layer it up like that. But his, I mean, his voice on, without all that, like he just kills it. So yeah, I don't know. He sounds fantastic. Beg him to do some acoustic videos for YouTube or something, and you can see. Okay, cool. Your second trivia on Futurama, I feel like you might get this one right. In an episode called Godfellas, Bender becomes God. What is the single commandment he sets forth to his followers? If you know anything about Bender, this should be an easy one. He commands everyone to do something as his only commandment. Here, hold on. Uh, just one second, though. Got I'm some, just kidding. Get some Google cheat. Uh, no, no. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Drink beer. I'll accept that, that as an answer. Hell, hell, yeah. I'll accept that. All right. The answer is provide him booze. Provide him booze is the answer. So we'll spin it. See what we can do. Well done. It landed on mandatory metalcore. So Matt, I need to know your favorite metalcore song. We're gonna jam it right now. Oh my god, I don't even know what metalcore is. <laughs> like the Jenny. Okay, okay. <laughs> like the what? Like da -da. there's so many names for all the new metal. I, I couldn't even. Oh my god. Basically, like singing and screaming, but not deathcore. Something Singing, like that. Screaming, but not deathcore. Okay, let's see. Um, I like uh, Architects. It's perfect. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Who were you gonna say instead? Um, uh, North Lane. Oh, let's do let's do North that, Lane. Is that? That's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Let's do That's e the let's right do category. Echo Chamber. Yeah. What do you think of the new album? Yeah, that's good. It's I like the different. the electronic -y route that they've gone. Yeah. It adds like yeah, a different like feel that. to to the guitars and stuff. It has like a different kind of vibe, but it's it's cool. So I like metal that feels like a soundtrack. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what I like about them when they do have a lot of electronics that complement uh the guitars and and the vocals especially. I like those long reverby drawn out vocals over it like that real like ambient feeling sound real big big sound that's what i like in the metal let's jam it hell yeah well matt we are almost out of time but sir what do you got going on the rest of the day and again plug or promote anything you'd like uh okay well if you go onto our page and and follow the go down the rabbit hole find the link page the link tree page or whatever it is uh, where you can buy merch or you can buy a copy of the CD and the CD actually has an extra song on it that's not on Spotify that we're not going to put on Spotify so if you want to hear it you got to go on and get the CD and we do have some of them that we've signed I don't know if it matters right now but we did it so is, uh, depending on like some people that order it sometimes the sign one goes out sometimes not it's just kind of no you can pick which one you want it's like a buck more or whatever but all that money just oh it's worth it towards our, our budget to make videos and did you did you yeah. pre have brian sign a whole bunch of them and then get them I to you took them over there and i was like threw a mark at him like let's go <laughs> <laughs> whatever you gotta do whatever I works a picture of him signing yeah he was just like throwing them at me like it was cool that is awesome. Well, Matt, I appreciate yeah. you spending some time with me, man. Not only that, but uh, rescheduling from yesterday to today. Yeah. I felt like absolute shit yesterday, and I feel a lot better today. So thank you, sir. I look forward to that world premiere exclusive that you said yeah. you're going to give me sometime next year. I'm excited about that. Um, yeah. But but please, bro, you're welcome back anytime, man. I had a lot of fun with this one. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate it. Easier questions next time.
I got you. I'll try not to stump you, but uh, if it's okay with you, can I put this interview on YouTube later? I'll edit out the music yeah. for copyright reasons, but uh, okay, cool. Hell yeah, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Matt Smith, dead I go. Give me a hell yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day, brother. Thank you. All right, have a good one. Cheers.